All right, let me go ahead and introduce you to chapter 11, Profiling Satanic Cults and Cult-Related Murder. And um, I, I think I should start out by pointing out that um, it's extremely difficult to come up with a clear definition of a cult. And you hear this term thrown around a lot in the media, especially when it relates to smaller or splinter religious groups or other groups that seem to uh, be um, very different from uh, mainstream uh, society. So there's different, definitely a social construction cultural aspect to defining what a cult is. Um, our main focus here will be on uh, scenarios that are related uh, to violent crimes, but uh, I do want to mention a few things first, and that is investigating cult-related homicides and sexual abuse is extremely complex because of the legal aspects, the community reactions, the politics, the risks of false allegations, the history, and the, of course the um, societal reaction. We've actually seen at different time periods uh, which crazes, which hunts, and also satanic scares. And there's a lot of debate still about this. Uh, I want to go back historically just to briefly mention the Salem witch trials and the hanging of women who were accused of being witches. This is kind of the inverse, that it was actually the legal system and the religious institutions that persecuted and killed uh, women who were asserting their independence. And so it's important to look back historically. Also, we can look um, uh, back into the 80s, the California McMartin preschool case, uh, which um, uh, led to some allegations of satanic cult rituals, ritual sexual abuse, and all kinds of bizarre um, allegations that were proved to be false, or obviously false, and this case is used often as an example of what not to do in child sexual abuse investigations. It was considered, or is considered, I think by today's standards, a total failure of the um, criminal justice system, the legal system, and the mental health system, and the child protective system, uh, and the community. Uh, a very fascinating case indeed. Uh, in fact, there were so many mistakes made that there are books and articles written about this in order to try to prevent it from happening in the future. It's still a very hot topic among some. Uh, I once mentioned this uh, at a training seminar, and someone yelled at me for critiquing uh, the ways the interviews were conducted. And sorry, but uh, you know you can read the transcripts of some of the interviews, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And the media can add additional complex uh, complexity to uh, the case uh, because you get all these talk show experts. All these people come out of the uh, you know, out of who knows where, and all of a sudden they're experts, and um, they may, and uh, but they may not, and they may have an agenda and, uh, and to present as 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 well, and and so you may not get accurate information at all. I mean, come on, watch some of the um, shows on television, and um, you know, evaluate and critically think about whether or not that information is accurate or not, or where they got that in information. Uh, remember, the, the um, goal is to get viewers, and so the media uh, you know, uh, will try to present the most bizarre aspects of a case and would like to get as much attention as, as possible. But I go back for a moment to um, uh, Kai Erickson, I'm, I'm sorry, um, uh, yeah, Kai, Kai Erickson's uh, work, uh, The Wayward Puritans, a um, amazing study about uh, the witchcraft trials in Salem, among some of the other trials related to uh, the particular uh, time uh, period. And um, what we have here uh, is um, a, a case where we looked at shifting boundaries of deviance in the law and social control and deviance. And to quote Erickson, he states on page 14, many of the institutions designed to discourage deviant behavior actually operate in such a way as to perpetuate it. And then some of the themes that he points out in his book, for example, is the relationship between the community boundaries 
and the different types of deviance, and also the volume of deviance. And he asked the question, is the amount of deviance constant over time? And do we try to keep deviance within uh, bound uh, rather than to eradicate it? Do we, in other words, try to keep it at a certain level? And how does society deal with their uh, deviance? In, um, in, in chapter 3, uh, The Shapes of the Devil, he discusses the witches of uh, Salem Village and um, what ha occurred with um, uh, the symptoms of being a witch the, or the witch profile and the, the actual trials leading to um, uh, the sentences and the deaths of uh, some of these uh, victims that were accused of being witches. And um, in, in a sense, even though it's quite an old case, the Salem cases show us how profiling, because that's what they did in a sense, can go terribly wrong. Uh, now we can, uh, you know, move our attention to more contemporary uh, aspects related uh, to cult-related uh, profiling. Uh, but again, I mentioned that um, certainly there are satanic groups that do not commit crimes, and then there are satanic groups that do. Just like there are other groups, there are other groups that are considered cults that engage in criminal activity, and there's other groups that are considered cults that do not. So our main focus really uh, will be if the particular group engages in specifically violent criminal behavior. And we'll pick up on that on the next video.